Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to 32 Manias of Mike. Oh, boy, we are on WrestleMania 12, and guys, we're, we're in Anaheim, California, and I feel, I feel like there's an aura of Tony Stark around this WrestleMania. Oh, that's why. It's because it's the Iron Man match. Hmm. All right, yeah, you you know why we're here. It's WrestleMania time once again. Um, I gotta say, I was a little worried about this mania because I didn't remember a lot of things from it. I knew it was the Iron Man match, and I haven't seen the match in full in years. So I wasn't sure how much I was going to like watching it again, but we'll get to it. Um, but this is this is a damn fun mania. It really is, and I think, I think it's the first WrestleMania where every match was had a decisive winner, like pinfall or submission. I think, I'm pretty, I'm pretty positive of it. I know there are no DQs, I know there are no countouts, but yeah. Um, all right, so let's get into it. As you know, the Iron Man match is an hour long, so. It's generally going to be a reduced card. Uh, but you know what? Let's talk about... This wasn't on the WWE Network. Um, so I'm not going to speak to it too much because I didn't get to see it. But I remember this was, I think, the first time the WWE experimented with the free-for-all. Which was showing um, a preview match to see if you wanted to buy the pay-per-view. This was done on pay-per-view providers... And I think they still do like the pre-shows on YouTube now to see if you want to get the network. But I uh, I remember this because it was it was a tag team title match, and it wasn't on the main card, but it was being given away for free. It was the Body Donnas with Sonny going up against the Godwins Henry and Phineas for the vacant tag team championships. I believe, oh, uh, who had the belts before? I want to say it was Owen Hart and. Yoko, I think, I'm not positive. I forget who had the belts or the reasons they were uh, held up. But um, from what I remember, it, it was a good match. They didn't show any highlights on the pay-per-view, which was surprising because it is the Tag Team Championships. And it's Sonny. You'd think they'd want Sonny on the main show, but I guess they give Sonny away for free to entice you to get the whole thing. It makes sense. But yeah, the Bydons won the Tag Team Championships. Now, into the main card. Um, whew, we open up with six-man tag action. And I didn't know who was going to be in this match. I knew once I saw Vader, I'm like, okay, he's teaming with Owen and Bulldog. Because I remember the whole Camp Cornette bit. And I knew they had to be going up against Yokozuna. But I, but I forgot who Yoko's partners were. And it turned out to be Jake Roberts and Ahmed Johnson. The weirdest possible three-man team you could ever imagine in your life. By the way, if you want um, a collaboration of weird teams, just put Ahmed Johnson in any kind of team environment. It automatically makes for a weird team. I remember there was a there was a six-man team of Ahmed, the Ultimate Warrior, and Shawn Michaels. Oh, uh, I forget what pay-per-view that was for. Find that promo online. Sean is trying his best to keep both of those guys focused. It's amazing. It's it's really really good. Um, but yeah, it's a it, this is a fun match. This is built basically around getting Vader and Yokozuna to go one on one with each other, which they do actually for a great for a good deal of it. Kind of surprising. Um, but eventually Vader does get the pin over Jake Roberts. And, uh, yeah, it's a really fun match. Uh, all the matches here tonight are really fun. They really are. Like, And I forgot this was the backlot brawl, WrestleMania. Totally forgot. So as soon as this first match ended, I saw we're taking to the Hollywood backlot with Roddy Piper. And I'm like, oh, yes, this is fantastic. Because the Hollywood backlot brawl, it's basically Roddy Piper taking They Live and mashing it up with professional wrestling, which is amazing. Um, 
the, it, it opens by Goldust hitting him with a car. Legitimately, it, it's go watch the Hollywood Backlot Brawl because it's only part one of the Hollywood Backlot Brawl, and we will get into part two because the fans got the fans only got to see part of it on a screen. They got to see the finish live in the arena. Um, <laughs> and boy, what a finish it was! We'll get to it when we come to when we come there, though, because you know takes a little bit for the guys to get back uh to the ring but yeah a lot of violent a lot of violent bits here um eventually piper scares off gold dust and gold dust drives away in his gold caddy and um roddy piper is looking for a vehicle to follow him and finds a white bronco that won't be significant at all there don't worry about it. all right uh so moving on we come back to the arena and we have the million dollar champion Stone Cold Steve Austin going up against Savio Vega. And um yeah, I mean it, these guys had a long feud, longer than you'd probably expect. But um it's a fun match. Austin gets his first WrestleMania win. Gonna be very important later. Uh but yeah, really fun match. Uh it goes about ten minutes and yeah, it, it, it was great. But now, oh, now we get to another debut for WrestleMania. Um, this guy, I'm not sure if you've heard of him. His name is Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Kind of a blue blood gimmick, a little weird. Uh, but, but yeah, um, not his de- not his wrestling debut in WWE, obviously, but his WrestleMania debut, and he's going up against a returning superstar by the name of the Ultimate Warrior. Now. You can watch this match in a GIF. Warrior destroys Triple H very quickly, under two minutes. Uh, but the real kicker here is Hunter Hearst Helmsley had, had an angle where he would come down with a new valet every every show, every Raw. By the way, this is the first WrestleMania that has used Raw clips from Raw to plug a match, which is awesome. It's very, very exciting because you can tell this is when Raw was starting to turn it around a little bit too. But um but yeah, so Hunter herself like, came out to um to WrestleMania with that a gorgeous young woman, a, a blonde lady. Um oh what is her name? Sable. Yeah, you you know Sable. She made her WrestleMania debut at WrestleMania twelve. Um and Oddly enough, Triple H, excuse me, Hunter Hearst Helmsley is so upset. He he drags Sable backstage. He says it's all her fault. And who should be in the area but a new superstar being interviewed by the name of Wild Man Mark Marrow, Sable's husband. And they start fighting. And it starts a feud backstage at WrestleMania. It's actually pretty great. Um, But now we get into... The Undertaker, I'm sure you've heard of him, um, going up against a guy who will be having his last WrestleMania moment for a while, Big Daddy Cool Diesel, or as we call him in 2017, Easy D. That's a, that's a joke. I apologize. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a good match. It's really good. You can tell Diesel wants to go out on a high note after uh, what happened at WrestleMania 11. Him and Taker pull out all the stops. They really do. They're fan- they work fantastic together. Two big guys just beating the crap out of each other. And as you can expect, Taker gets the win and the streak continues. I believe he is at five and zero oh, or six. I lost count. WWE isn't WWF isn't even counting at this point yet. So go figure. But um, before we get to our main event. We've been getting updates all night of a white Ford Bronco driving down the highway. And guess where they pulled up? The Arrowhead Pond in, Al- in Anaheim, California. Oh my God, Goldust is back in the arena. Roddy Piper's back in the arena. They fight all the way to the ring. Um, Goldust kisses Piper. Piper gets pissed, kicks him in the dick, and strips him of his gold singlet to reveal plus size um, undergarments. Of a female erotic nature. 
yeah, it's real. If you get Goldust book, you can hear about him shopping for uh, for the lingerie. It's kind of hilarious. Uh, it, it's it's a great ending. Crowd pops huge. Plus, it's a good use of a segment instead of a match. Like like it's a closer of a match. But let's be honest, it's a segment. It's a great use of that as a palate cleanser, as opposed to let's say a women's match, because I have a feeling we're going to be getting a lot of that in the upcoming WrestleManias. But now we get to the main event of the evening. Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Iron Man match. Um, when, when we first hear Shawn Michaels' music, Jose Lothario comes out, and and he points to the sky, and he did this way before Lady Gaga, y'all. Shawn Michaels zip lines down all the way to the floor. One of the coolest WrestleMania moments of all time, if not the coolest I'm going to say, if not the coolest, I mean, sure. I think the only thing that in my personal head can that tops this is Rusev coming out with a tank. That's badass. Zipline tank, zipline tank. I will take either of those as my number one coolest entrance of all time. Please let me know what your coolest entrance of all time is. Is it? Miz coming out to hate me now. Is it New Day coming out to Bootios? Is it is it Rhythm and Blues coming out to a catalog driven by DDP? I don't know. Maybe that's your thing. Let me know, please. I I I think when all this is done, I might put together a poll of greatest WrestleMania entries of all time. And I want to get your guys' opinion on it. But um yeah, and then Brett comes out normal fair and fair. Uh, it actually gives us one of the best Bret Hart uh, video images of all time where he's he's listening to the rules and he just slightly looks away from the camera and just winks. Like, if you've seen any Bret Hart package, you've seen that wink because it's the best. Um, but yeah, I was worried about this match because I know Bret, I've, I know Bret Hart matches. I've seen them. I know Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels, I was never concerned about with this match, even as a kid. I'm like, Shawn Michaels is going to be fun. But Bret Hart can be a little boring. Case in point, WrestleMania 11. Match with Bob Backlund, not the greatest match in the world. Um, but this one, an, an hour flies by. You don't even know you're watching it that long. Uh, it's super well paced. The, these guys, ah, it's really, really good. The, they're... They're just chain wrestling for like 10 minutes, but it's so emphatic that you feel like stuff is happening. Like, it's really, really good. Um, but yeah, uh, as as you guys know, this is one of the biggest matches in WWE history. Um, 60 minutes goes by, no score. New acting president, Gorilla Monsoon, comes out and says there must be a winner. So, uh, Brett's a little pissed. We go into sudden death overtime. And oh, sweet chin music. And I, I believe the the, <clears throat> the boyhood dream has come true for Shawn Michaels. And a lifelong feud has started with Bret Hart. I'm sure that won't come back to bite either of them at all. Ever. Uh but yeah, and you could even see that they're building for a rematch for next year's WrestleMania. Um, because as Bret Hart is walking down the aisle after losing, all he's doing is staring at the Videotron with Shawn Michaels holding his title. It's an amazing visual. Let's see if WrestleMania 13 has that rematch because it sure seems like they're setting up for it. I think you guys know where this goes. But just in case you don't, We'll get there next time. but um, And let's see. I'm trying to use my memories again. I believe WrestleMania 13 is in Chicago, where a young Colt Cabana is ringside. Pretty positive about that. I'm going to have to take a look. But, um, yeah. So, I'm going to be back with more um, 32 Manias of Mike. If you want to hit me up, it's at MadMike4883 on the Twitter machine. Hit up us on uh, Facebook on Twitter at Mayhem Show with the hashtag MM. Or you know what? Hashtag 32 Manias. Why not? Hashtag 32 Manias. I'm going to start saying that now too. Um, but yeah, 
Let me know what your favorite, because this honestly might be my favorite WrestleMania so far. It might be. I, I don't know if it's because it it seems shorter because there are only six matches on the card. Um, It's definitely a more streamlined WrestleMania, and I really appreciate that. All right. Um, So, for Mad Mike, I'm Mad Mike, and this has been 32 Manias of Mike. 